An extremely important part of a web application is ensuring that the data that you submit into your database has been validated. So you don't want someone to just be able to type anything in there. So therefore you have to control it somehow. And Laravel comes with validation, which is really, really easy to use. So let's try it out. Let's just say, for example, I fill out this form and I just type my name, but I don't type anything else. If we hit create user, we're going to get an error. It's going to be an integrity constraint violation, which means that the data that we're submitting or trying to submit into the database is, uh, has an error. So for example, we didn't type everything. So it's trying to submit blank values. And because our database uh, fields don't allow nullable apart from the notes field, it's going to spit back an error. If we type our name, email and password, but not notes, it will work because notes has been set to nullable. So what we need to do is we need to grab the request. We need to validate it first. And if it doesn't meet our requirements, it will send the user back to fix the form before it submits properly. To do server side validation, just go back into your text editor, go into your user controller. And this is from what we did in our previous video. This is how we create a user. What we want to do is we want to check this before the user gets created. So let's create a validation. You do that by doing request, validate. And within there, we want to create an array. And within that array, we want to check each item or each field that gets sent through. So for example, we want to check F name. Okay, so F name, and then it is required. L name is required as well. Email is required, however, it must be an email. So Laravel will check that it's an email before it allows the, uh, the form to process. We then want to check that there is a password and notes don't need to be required. So we'll just leave notes how they are. We don't have to put it in the validation. So now that we've set that up, let's go back into our form, refresh it, and let's just hit create user. Let's not fill anything out on our form. Oh, we'll just fill this out. You'll notice that nothing happens. If we go into our form, as, uh, into our database, nothing has been added as well. So let's just go and have a look. As you can see, nothing is adding in there. But again, the user does not know what's happening because it's coming with a blank. It's just coming as a blank form again. So what we firstly need to do is we need to send through a message back through the session, very similar to how we did with the success message before, um, telling the user that they've got something wrong and they need to complete it before they can submit the form. To do that, let's go back into our home, uh, sorry, our create user.blade file. And we then want to do another if statement. So it's going to be if errors, any, and then we'll do end if, and then we'll do a for each within there. So this errors variable is passed automatically into your view from the request, uh, sorry, from the validation method. So if there is a validation that has not passed, it's going to send the errors variable through to your view, which you can automatically uh, do whatever you want with. So let's do, now let's do a for each and we'll do for each errors, oops, errors all as error. And then we'll do end for each. And within there, we want to then spit out the, the actual error. So we just have to do error. Great. Let's go back to our form and try that again. We'll hit create user. There we go. The L name field is required. The email field, the password field is required. Okay. So maybe if we just made this uh, a list item instead of just a string, might come out a bit nicer. Try it again. Great. Okay. So now it hasn't submitted, but one thing you'll notice is that the form has lost all of the fields. You obviously want to maintain the fields if you've made an error, so then you can just make a quick change, so then you can submit the form. Lucky for us, Laravel has this built in. All we have to do is go back into our view and go back to our form, and we have to give a value of each of our items or our inputs as the name here, 
but we just add something extra to it. So let's open the, the uh, curly brackets, old F name. And we'll do exactly the same and with L name, do exactly the same with email and do exactly the same with password and do exactly the same with notes. Great. So now it's going to give a value of old, which is a function that Laravel saves the old values that you've typed in pre before the validation, and then it will spit it back out. So let's try it. Let's go, let's type some information in here, but we won't type it all. So I'm just going to type Sean greatest. We'll hit create user. It will come back, but the data still remains. Let's try type an email in there. Cool. Yep. Now the password field is required. Great, okay, the password field, we'll type it in now, we'll hit create user. And as you can see, the user has been added successfully because the validation has passed. If we go back into our project and we go to our user controller, you will notice that this is getting quite large. What Laravel is good at is separating uh, logic so that nothing takes up too much space, nothing is overly complex. Um, so what you can do with validations is if you want to, this is completely optional, is you can create a form request validation, which basically takes away this uh, validation request here and places it into its own kind of, uh, I guess you'd call it a request. So what we can do to do that is we go into our terminal and we'll do php artisan make request and we'll just call it create user because that is the request where we're creating a user with that request. Okay, it doesn't have to be called create user, it can be whatever you want, but just to keep everything consistent. Let's then, you'll then notice that in our app HTTP request folder, there is something called create user now. So what you can do is you can just grab this completely and go into our create user uh, .php file. You can then put your rules into here. So let's just paste that. We'll just grab this out of there. Put the rules into here. And you also need to say what will happen when the rules pass. And right now it's false. We want it to be true. Okay, so if the rules pass, we want it to return true, which means that the user can be created. Now all we have to do is we just have to change this request type hint to create user, which refers to this request name here. And that's as simple as that. So if we now go into our form and we just type something, you'll notice Actually, there is still an issue. We did miss something quite small, which is the actual request. We need to import it into our controller. To do that, go to the top and do use app HTTP requests create user. Therefore, our controller knows what create user is. Okay, let's go back into our form again and we will just hit create user again. And as you can see, the, the validation works exactly the same as it did before. You don't have to use that, but that can be useful if you're making a very large web application. Now with all this validation being done, one thing is extremely important that you should know, and that is that validation should be done on the front end as well. So you probably already know this, but in a form, you can easily just type required, which is uh, your browser's inbuilt functionality to make sure that something is required before hitting submit. I would always recommend doing some front-end validation with JavaScript or even just using in the front-end uh, browser required functionality just to add that extra layer of security. You don't want someone to be able to just keep going on here and hit create user a million times and hitting your database every single time for validation. You want your browser to do the browser to do some of the, the, the work before it hits your server. In the next video, we are going to learn about updating and deleting records from the database.